from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to sunny and chilly London, everybody. We are in the Docklands here in Excel London. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. This is our third day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of HPE Discover 2016. This is the European show. There are about 10,000 people here. Last night was the big customer event. Uh, all the HPE folks were there getting together. Number of customer dinners. Europe is known, well known, for its intimate customer dinners in the evening, and they tend not to do the big, big bash blowouts. So the, so the big party was somewhat subdued, but still there were a lot of people there last night. Uh, we've been covering HPE at Discover's for about the last five years, watching the transition of, of HPE from the Herd era through the very brief uh, Apotheca era, and obviously the bulk of it being the Meg Whitman era five years ago, she embarked on a transformation agenda for HPE, cleaning up the autonomy acquisition and delevering many parts of the company, shoring up the balance sheet. In the meantime, they've done a number of acquisitions, a couple of key ones uh, that we've been talking about this week, uh, Paul Gillen, my co-host, and I, Aruba, <clears throat> which is the most recent acquisition, which looks to be a real winner, and then a smaller sort of tuck-in for SGI, the, the, the well-known and, uh, and the ancient often supercomputer the, the company. Battered, battered yeah. but unbowed. Yeah, uh, right, uh, right, they were chapter company. 11 and you know, almost, you know, almost went, went bust, but a little interesting tuck-in for, for HPE. So, I mean, on balance, you know, we're clearly, as I say, seeing uh, the improvement in the financials of the company, the stock's up this year, that's good news. You know, at the same time, the company is narrowing its focus really into infrastructure. It was interesting yesterday when I said, hey, you're a pure play infrastructure company. Antonio Neri somewhat bristled. So that's not true. And of course, what he meant was, you know, there's a services component as well. Um, and, you know, Antonio used to run the services business. Scott McNeely used to joke that services is where companies go to die. <laughs> um, now, of course, he used to say that about IBM, and then, of course, Sun Microsystems died <laughs> and ended up getting acquired uh, by Oracle. Yeah, but nonetheless, this point was, shouldn't be lost, which is that you know, living off of a services revenue stream is less sexy. And you know, Wall Street looks at product growth. They tend to look at things, and so for software companies, they look at license growth. Uh, for hardware companies, they look at you know, new product growth they tend to discount the revenue that comes from maintenance, which is kind of interesting, Paul, because that maintenance revenue is an annuity, but nonetheless, uh, Hewlett Packard is really predominantly an infrastructure company with services that support that infrastructure, not break fix, you know, other horizontal services, but that's really what the business has become. Well, if you look at Microsoft, for 10 years, Microsoft stock didn't move at all. It was still the dominant company in its, in its business. It had a, a healthy, growing top line, but it was not perceived as being on the leading edge of, of anything new. And, uh, and I think HPE's challenge is to break out of that uh, reputation of just being a, a company that's living off an annuity stream and really doing something uh, something that's fresh and innovative. Uh, innovate, that was their, their theme for a long Invent, time. Invent, right? Invent, Invent was right. The uh, and we've got the, their IoT initiative, uh, looks interesting. I'm not sure it's very differentiated, saying we're the IT and IoT. I mean, everybody's got an IoT initiative right now. I, I don't see theirs as being all that uh, different. Uh, their software, uh, business, they, they seem to be almost uh, allergic to software, uh, judging by the, the giveaway of, uh, of the uh, OpenStack business to, uh, to uh, SUSE, which was announced yesterday, didn't, no cash the open stack, The OpenStack distro. OpenStack distro, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no cash changed hands. They basically gave the business to SUSE, uh, trying uh, to get out of that business, which, which is fine. I mean, they're, they're making a statement. That well, that be clear. Is, be clear, so what they're doing is they're basically, it's a cost-cutting move. They're saying, okay, because yeah. when you do an OpenStack distro, you have to have a bunch of committers writing code for open source, and it's expensive. You got headcount that's writing code and not, you're not monetizing that. So they said, let's get rid of that cost. We'll give it to SUSE and their other products, to Kata. And partners, I mean, they're giving everything, that, that, uh, everything that's a cost mm -hmm. center outside of their basic data center infrastructure. So they're essentially so they're becoming they're a partners. reseller of that, of that product. So HPE is comfortable you know, reselling a lot of technology. We saw that with Arista. And it's a lower margin business. So, you know, in, in, so the, the question has always been, what is the Hewlett Packard IP? That's the question that they got sort of in the herd era. 
Uh, and then, so what you saw was, uh, were, were attempts, and certainly Apotech are trying to do this, attempts to vertically integrate with software, both Vertica and, uh, and Autonomy. Uh, that was, you know, clearly the intent was IP, it's just, it was IP that was sort of the, the, the body rejected, if you will. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh, well their IP uh, uh, clearly now in the data center is this idea of, of, a, uh, of a pool of resources that can be flexibly allocated and managed um, a la cloud. Uh, whether they right. can deliver on that, there's a lot of excitement I, I sense at the show about that idea. Whether they can deliver on it is something we'll see over the next year. They're beginning to ship uh, these, these products now and uh, you know, the, Time will tell, the customers will, will tell the story. Well, if you don't own the operating system, and you don't own the, the, the chipset, and you don't own the software, um, you know, what's left? Okay, the hardware, which is increasingly uh, you know, under margin pressure, and the management components. The, uh, Meg Whitman made the point on day one that we're still in the software business. Yes and no, they're in the software business to manage infrastructure. That's, it's software, like, like EMC's in the software business. You know, or, so, you know, it's not a it's not a pure play software business model, which was the intent of Autonomy and Vertica, which clearly are higher margin pure play software business models. Hewlett Packard is choosing to focus and go with and be comfortable with a lower margin, predominantly infrastructure business, and their IP is technologies on top of that to manage that, like those pools of infrastructure. Well, back to IoT. Their differentiation in IoT to me, I think, is the connectivity of Aruba. So if you're going to instrument the windmill, you've got to connect to the windmill. So Aruba is, is a, a good opportunity to do that. The other piece of IoT, however, that HPE is going to have to partner to, to deliver on is the analytics. You know, IoT ain't so much to me anyway about the things. Obviously it's about the things and instrumenting the things, but it's the data around the things. We were hoping to have Bill Rue on today, but my understanding is he had to fly back to the States on short notice. Um, but you think about what GE is doing. Why is GE trying to become a Silicon Valley software company with thousands and thousands of employees? It's all about the data. They're trying to harness that data and be able to make proactive uh, decisions in near real time about all those you know, industrial things that they have out there. And, that, oh, so and that's a key piece of it. So how, the big, big question is, how does HP leverage the data play? And it has to do that through partnerships and reselling and it, agreements. And it, uh, it, it just divested its, its analytics play, its uh, Vertica uh, engine. Uh, so yeah, they'll have to do that through, through partnerships. I'm curious about GE. Uh, there was talk yesterday, uh, uh, Antonio Neri was talking about how close that partnership is becoming. Love to see if there's going to be more more of a, a formal business relationship there. Uh, GE doing six billion dollars in IoT analytics business this year. They claim uh, clearly has the pole position in in the industrial Internet of Things, which is where the action is right now, and and, and it, that's a natural place for HP to play. Well, it's interesting. So GE made, I believe, it was a hundred million dollar investment in Pivotal. Uh, so there's a relationship, obviously, that they have with, with Dell, so they're hedging that. They've obviously got a relationship with, with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, GE, I don't think, is going to dance with IBM. I think IBM and GE are more competitive in this world, in that whole IoT well, space. Well, IBM is an analytics company, and GE wants to be an analytics company. Yeah, that's right. Both analytics and IBM's acquisition of the weather company um, really was as much of an IOT play as it was you know, a, a, a data play. One billion endpoints uh, the weather company it's interesting. claims to have. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and you know, my line on that is uh, Dell buys EMC, IBM buys a weather company. What does that tell you about <laughs> the two companies' strategies? You know, a lot of ways to skin a cat, uh, but essentially what we see here is Dell, EMC lining up you know, against HP with a business model that is, that is, that is, is ostensibly high volume, lower margin, uh, with not a huge software component. You've seen Dell uh, get rid of some of its, its software pieces, uh, although Dell still <laughs> maintains Pivotal and VMware. You know, people were speculating that, that, uh, uh, that, that Dell would sell VMware. I don't think that's the case. Um, I've heard rumors that Amazon's going to buy VMware. I, I don't think that's the right move for Dell. It's, it's too strategic, it's too high a margin business, it's too much leverage there, but uh, I think people feel as though Dell needs to do that to pay off the debt. But uh, is, it, is it strategic to Dell, or is it is it just a, a big uh, valuable asset that they can that they can milk? I, I personally, I think both, really, f in part because it is a big valuable asset that they can milk. I mean, imagine EMC without VMware. Right. How uninteresting that company would have been in the last. Yeah, you, you talk know, about a growth story. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 a margin story. So, um, I think there's a lot of confusion about 
about Dell EMC. We'll see with the inter interest rate, you know, rising climate, what what that that all means. But without being a public company, they don't have to do dividends. They don't have to do share buybacks. And I think they can service that debt. And I've had this conversation. You know, we've had this conversation with Michael Dell on the Cube. Uh, they can service that debt, you know, quite comfortably out of cash flow, uh, and still have money left over for acquisitions. I mean, that seems to be. You know, I've, and I've checked that data point with a number of people internally at Dell EMC. I don't see that as the big problem. If the interest rate climate changed dramatically, that could become a problem. Then maybe they have to do something drastic. Drastic. But you look at HPE. HPE returned three billion dollars to shareholders last year in the form of dividends and and, and stock buybacks. You know, and, and they maintained two point one billion in free cash flow. So. There's, you know, but that's they've not a got a story. They've I mean, got a service that, I mean, it is for the stock, but you know, by for, reducing the flow. It's good for the stock, it's good for the shareholders, but when you're sitting on that amount of cash, you remember when Microsoft paid its first dividend to shareholders, it did so under the, the it, kicking and screaming, uh, because that was a sign that they didn't have any more places to invest. So, right. Uh, uh, share buybacks are, you know, as a way to, to boost the stock price, certainly has been effective in that respect, but where are they going to invest if they really are not in the software business, and we didn't hear any indication from the executives we talked to that they're going back there, where are the areas to invest? Hardware is going to be tough, as you point out. D uh, Dell is comfortable living in a low margin world. Uh, you've got uh, Huawei, and you've got the, the uh, white box competitors from um, uh, from overseas that are working on even lower margins. So, so HP is going to be pressured in that area, and they've got to innovate in in the management and in the uh, in, in the architecture in, in ways that are really the customers really understand. They really value. So, what we're hoping to do today is we want to tie a bow on HPE Discover 2016 London. Really try to bring into focus some of the changes that have been taking place, and try to really look forward to what the new HPE is going to look like without EDS with the micro focus spin in, without the software component, really the EG business is now HP going forward. That's, a, that's, a, that's an 11% last quarter operating profit business. You know, it's been as low as seven, it was 7% for the, for the entire year. HPE's got to get that, that, that operating profit up and those margins up, but still it's a, it's a low to mid-teens operating profit environment, whereas as we've talked to many, many times about AWS's operating profit in the last quarter was about 32%. So, you know, three times, three times you know, HPE's operating profit, that's a big delta there. So HPE obviously is comfortable with that business model. So that's something that we're going to try to sort of look forward to today. Uh, we'll be covering uh, all day today. We've got a number of guests. Uh, Paul Gillen and I uh, will be here. This is theCUBE. We're in London. We'll be right back.